ever try explaining what makes good food, you know, to like an alien? Okay, I see where you're going with this. It's not just about ingredients, right? It's the whole experience. The taste, the texture, the presentation. Exactly. And somehow Google's got to teach that to an algorithm. Train it to see quality the way we do. <laughs> That's a tall order. Well, lucky for us, we got some insider info. We're diving deep into how Google judges websites. We're talking Google search, central articles, blog posts, the works. But the real gem, this search quality evaluator guidelines PDF, it's like... Google's training manual for humans. Oh, I've heard of this. They use it to, like, calibrate their raters, right? <laughs> Make sure everyone's on the same page. Exactly. So we get to peek behind the curtain and see what they're really looking for. It's not just about keywords anymore, is it? Well, keywords matter, but it's way more nuanced now. All right, like, Google's always tweaking its algorithms, these core algorithm updates they talk about. So it's like what worked last year might not cut it today. Think of it like a restaurant owner constantly adjusting the menu based on what customers want. Okay, so Google's got to stay fresh, keep up with the times, just like that trendy bistro downtown. And if you're really deep into this SEO world, Marie Haynes keeps this amazing list. Marie Haynes? Yeah, she tracks all of Google's algorithm changes, like going back years. But we don't need to go that deep today. Maybe another time. So if it's not just keywords, what are these Google judges looking at? Good question. Google calls them search signals. They've got five big ones. Hit me with them. All right, so we got meaning, relevance, quality. Okay, those make sense. What else? Usability and context. Sounds kind of jargony, but... But it's all about making sure the user finds what they need and has a good experience. Exactly. Google cares about the whole package now. Just stuffing a page with dog won't cut it if you're trying to rank for them. Best dog parks in your city. You got it. Pictures, videos, actually useful info. Google wants to see you're passionate about those cups, not just tricking the system. So it's not enough to just talk the talk. you got to walk the walk. 100%. And this is especially important for what Google calls your money or your life topics, or YMYL for short. YMYL. Sounds intense. Oh, it is. We're talking about topics that have a real impact on people's lives, you know, like medical advice, financial stuff, even things like relationship advice. Okay, so like high stakes information. You don't want to mess around with that. <laughs> and Google knows that. They have a huge responsibility to make sure they're surfacing the most trustworthy and accurate information for those searches. It's a whole different ball game when you're talking about someone's health or financial well-being. Google can't afford to get that wrong. Exactly. So when Google's looking at these like high stakes YMYL sites, what are they really scrutinizing? Well, this is where that PDF, the evaluator guidelines thing gets really interesting. Oh yeah, we gotta crack that open some more. They're big on this thing called EAT. Expertise, authoritativeness, trustworthiness. Okay, so like you want an expert giving advice, right? That makes sense. Sure, but it's deeper than that. <laughs> A scam artist can be an expert in scamming, right? Oof, that's a good point. So just having credentials isn't enough. Nope. Think of it like this. Say you're looking at a website about financial advice, right? Okay, yeah, definitely a YMYL situation there. The PDF actually tells raters to check out the About Us page. Look for reviews from real sources, not just made up ones. So it's like verifying their credibility, making sure they're legit. Exactly. And they even say to look at the content itself. Oh, interesting. So it's not just about who's writing, but what they're actually saying. Totally. Are they using, like, shady language? Are there factual errors? Whoa. It's like being an internet detective, you know? I kind of love that. So even if someone has fancy degrees, if the advice they're giving is sus, Google picks up on that. You got it. And this all ties into another big thing from the guidelines. Page purpose. Page purpose. So like what the page is actually trying to do. Bingo. A product page has a different goal from, say, a funny meme website. Right? Well, yeah. One's trying to sell me something. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Google doesn't inherently favor one type over the other. It's about how well a page achieves what it's set out to do. So a forum where nobody ever answers your questions, that's not great. Especially if it's been around for a while. Low engagement usually means low quality in Google's eyes. Makes sense. But then how do you go from, like, good to blow Google's mind? Amazing. Uh, they actually have different levels of quality. They'll rate a page as, like, high quality. Which is still pretty good, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Think of it like a really good meal, satisfying, well-made. I'd recommend that restaurant to a friend, for sure. But then there's the highest quality level. Okay, so that's got to be, what, Michelin star level stuff. Exactly. Exceptional effort, original research, maybe even awards or recognition. So a local news site doing solid reporting, that might be high quality. Right. 
But the New York Times article that sparks a whole social movement, that's your highest contender. Okay, so there's levels to this. Makes you realize how much thought goes into it. But on the flip side, what makes Google mad? Oh, there's a whole section in the PDF on lowest quality pages. Hit me with the worst of the worst. Obvious stuff first. Hate speech, scams, anything harmful. That's an instant lowest. Good to know they're taking that seriously. What about like less extreme cases? Even just bad writing, man. Or pages that are just copied from somewhere else. No original value added. So even if you don't mean to be bad, you got to put in the effort. It's like you can have the best ingredients in the world, but if you burn dinner, nobody's happy. Man, we've gone deep down the Google rabbit hole today. It's like this whole other world exists behind those search results we see every day. Right. And the thing is, even if you're not like an SEO guru, this stuff matters. Oh, absolutely. It's about understanding what makes good content, period. Exactly. It's like those search signals Google talks about, those aren't just for algorithms, right? Nope. Meaning relevance, yeah. quality. Those are good for any kind of writing. Or videos or podcasts or whatever you're creating. 100%. If you can nail those, you're already ahead of the game. Makes you think those Google quality raters, they're kind of like the unsung heroes of the internet. Huh. In a way, yeah. They're the ones separating the wheat from the chaff, making sure we see the good stuff. So if we're trying to be better content creators, it's worth paying attention to what they do. Big time. And the cool thing is, Google's pretty open about it. Those search central articles, those are gold. Yeah, they lay it all out there. And for the really curious, that search quality evaluator guidelines PDF, that's like the masterclass. Exactly. It's like Google saying, hey, we're not hiding anything. Come see how we think. I dig it. So what have we learned today? Google's tough, but fair. They're always changing. And yeah. And it's not just about gaming the system. It's about creating something genuinely good. Couldn't have said it better myself. So to our listeners out there, go forth and make awesome content. Here, here. And if you ever need a refresher on how Google sees things, well, you know where to find us. Until next time, happy searching.